aspetta un attimo ma l'ho fatto questa è magica Today I'm going to show you a gorgeous summer dish. We're making fresh pasta, the guitar spaghetti with a whole lot of seafood. It's perfect, it's gorgeous, just like you. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the notification so that you know when a video drops. Let's get going. This gorgeous piece is a mobile chef's table. Really, it's a pasta queen, pasta making table that transforms into a gorgeous surface to prep or you put the pasta board and you tighten it to the surface so it doesn't move. Very important when you're making pasta. Today I'm making one of my favorite shapes and that's a guitar pasta. You're gonna need an instrument that literally plays like a guitar. It's got strings. So it's really a square spaghetti that comes through this one. It's called Tonnarello. This is really easy to come by. It's sold on Amazon. You can get it in my Amazon storefront as well. We're making two parts double of flour, one part of semolina and an egg and that's it. This is a very quick pasta. So let's start with creating the well. We're mixing the two flours. So I'm gonna give it a nice stir with my hands. Remember the Italian hand. So once it's mixed, you create the volcano of love and then we add the eggs. Remember, the rule of thumb is 100 grams of flour per one egg. And sometimes the eggs can be a little larger, a little smaller. Sometimes the flour can be a little more humid, a little bit more dry. So you really need to look. You can always add a little bit of water or extra virgin olive oil as well to make it a little bit more moist. We're baking three eggs into this. We have about 350 grams of flour for this combined. And now we work it in with a fork and we mix all the eggs until you have a pasty finish. So you just do this until you have a pasty mixture in the center and then you continue by hand. Now what you wanna do when you're making the dough, the fresh dough, is work it in, knead the dough long enough so that it becomes elastic, that it combines entirely. This is usually achieved by vigorous kneading for 10 to 15 minutes. There's really a way to see when your dough, your pasta dough is getting to the finish line. It starts becoming smooth. It starts becoming more elastic. So you see, we're really nearing the end. I'm using the palm of my hand and the strength of my arms to push down and stretch the dough and roll in each direction. So you press and you turn, you see? I'm gonna press on it and see. You see, it springs back. Everything has mixed so well that it really became the right elasticness. Now we cover with a clear wrap. It needs to be tight, no air allowed, so that it doesn't dry your dough. And you set it aside for 20 minutes. We're ready. Now we create that sheet. So we sprinkle a little bit of semolina and then we really divide and conquer. For this tonnarello, you're going down to five millimeter thickness. You know, I wanted to really show you and I wanted to share with you this really ancestral thing of uh, rolling and stretching by hand with a rolling pin. I particularly enjoy it. I flip it so that it's nice and floured on both sides because remember I sprinkled some semolina on the board to begin with. See, and really help myself stretch it just like this. And as I'm rolling, I'm stretch. And then slap it like that. Why do I slap it? I don't know, my nonna used to do it. She always said it makes the dough more elastic. You gotta slap your pasta. 
So I love to slap the pasta with the rolling pin. I feel it makes it more rustic. It gives it that extra little bit of love, you know? You see, we are about five millimeter thickness. You sprinkle it again before we cut it. Very important that it's not sticky when you put it on the guitar because when you're pressing down with the rolling pin, it might get stuck to the strings. So now we're creating three sections. They have to be about five and a half inch wide, okay? You don't have to get your ruler here, but if you want to be scientific about it, you can. But try to make him not wider than your guitar. Sorry. Okay, so we've got this gorgeous pasta sheet. So it doesn't matter if it falls a little bit at the end because I'm going to show you what we do. So you take your rolling pin and you start pressing. You see, if there's any little bit, you gently pull it. You see how here there's all this bit at the end? So we gently move it forward without breaking it all the way up again. And we put it down like this, okay? Now, you have your tornarello. Sprinkle it with semolina always. Move it to the side. And you've got your first tornarello. You see, we made a round pasta sheet, so of course, there's gonna be some strands that are shorter. But it doesn't matter. Now we do it again with this one. You can use this and if there's some stubborn strands, you go over it like that. You see this? Stubborn. Excellent. Always sprinkle it. Mm. Look. How perfect this is. Just like you are. Mwah. For this seafood guitar spaghetti, we are using mussels, clams, shrimps, calamari, some grape tomatoes, garlic, parsley, and white wine, and of course, extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> So listen, first thing, of course, we've pre-cleaned all of this, but in essence, it's super simple. While you get going with cleaning your muscles, which really, really only needs fresh water to clean them, as you scrub them with a little scrubby, I use a metal scrubby. This is the beard, this is where the muscles was attached, usually to these long nets underwater, and you pull it to the largest part, and you get rid of them. So if the muscle is open, they should close upon tapping. For example, this one is definitely not closing, it's dead. If the mussels come open, you do not cook this seafood. Under cold water, you're cleaning, making sure there's no impurities, growth, debris. You do that with each single one of them. While you're getting all the ingredients together, you're making your pasta and everything, without even thinking, just leave your clams on the side breathing in a little water with a pinch of salt. Once that's done, as you can see, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, cloudiness to this water. You can give it one final rinse. Shrimps. These, though, need to be cleaned of their internal goodiness. These are already clean, of course, because we need to get going. But you just use a paring knife you create that little incision, you remove it, and it's cleaned of any impurity or waste products. The last final ingredient that I really love, it's calamari, okay? You can get the whole calamaro, you can chop them into rings, and then really these cook very quickly, three to four minutes. I'm going to use one garlic clove with the peel on. Just give it a little scrunch. We say in camicia with its little shirt on, okay? We toss it in a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. The stems and leaves of parsley go in both. Get your pan sizzling, low to medium flame. No need to salt this dish. The sea gardens are doing it for you. Mussels going first. 
Next, the clams. Now the white wine. Now a little shake. Just really invites them to get going. Remember, two or three minutes, as soon as they open, you have to move them out because they get chewy. You do not want rubbery seafood. Let's take a peek. See, some are already opening. We move them out. It's the secret for a really soft, Melt in your mouth, clam muscle. A little bit more time for the clams to really open. These are the large clams. Pay attention, as soon as they open, you move them aside, okay? There you go, see? Look at this beauty. It's going out. Come on, late bloomers. This one just opened, moving out. And we're done. Now, we put this on the side. Now take a bowl and a sifter. Go one right here. You take this and you filter everything so that you have left the clean, clear, great broth out of it. And this is done. Next pan, a little bit larger, a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. We toss a handful only of grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes. This is where we start with the calamari. Remember, calamari take a little longer than the shrimp, so start with the calamari first. At this point, the shrimps go in. On a low to medium flame, smoke with white wine. Remember, a minute on each side, and then the shrimps should be Good, when they become nice and pink. Now, while this is happening, really, I'm tossing a couple of this in without their shells, both mussels and clams, just to have a little bit of variety within the pasta, inside of the pasta. And at this point, you add those juice. We're about one or two minutes away from the shrimp really cooking all the way through. These are really large. This is the point where I toss my fresh pasta in. It's that time! Pasta water is nice and bubbling. Salt. Pasta's going in. Remember, don't toss it about for the first 30 seconds so that it, it takes that first shock. It cooks a little bit so that when you're tossing it about to mix it, it doesn't break. For the last two minutes of their cooking, this cook like a fettuccine, okay? Three to four minutes. I'm cooking it for one only in hot boiling water. And then we put it inside and we force that fresh pasta to really absorb these juices. Mamma mia, this is gonna be divinely. Brain freeze. But this is gonna be divine and bold. Just like here. These are ready. One minute in. They are now going in here. This is dripping with the tears of the gods. We love that. This is the moment. You need to really shake it bigger. So it's gonna take two minutes because that's what they need to be al dente. A little bit of extra pasta water. Do you see how the juices basically disappeared? Because the pasta do okay. A little bit of that cloudy pasta magic. Now, this is the moment. Chop some parsley like crazy. We want it covered. Oh, look at that smoke. It's time for a whole lot of sprinkled parsley. Who doesn't love parsley? Olio on the raw. Just a little bit. Just to remind you of a Mediterranean summer. Just gorgeous. It's time. For the, for the mussel, it's delicious. 
Mm. Molto notevole, eccezionale, freschissima, estivissima, bellissima, proprio come te. This is just gorgeous. Oh. Now, gotta serve it just like this. Now, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you know when an awesome recipe that really makes you feel special is coming to you. Now I can't wait anymore. Gotta bring this to the families.